As you probably learned, most businesses need to pay for significant startup costs. While this may be intimidating, it doesn't stop all the new businesses that get registered in the U.S. every year. But what happens after the grand opening? What happens after an innovative solution gets to market and customers start to buy it? Well, if revenue begins to come in, then bills will need to be paid. It's just like your own household. Businesses have to pay rent or a mortgage. They have utility bills for electricity, gas, and water. They have maintenance, repairs, and taxes. But unlike a business, your family does not need to pay the salary and wages of workers. As you'll find out, labor tends to be the business's biggest expense. Accounting is the process of keeping financial accounts. Money comes into a business and money goes out to pay bills. Commonly, businesses need to hire accountants to keep track of the money. Big businesses even have entire accounting departments. There are a couple basic words to remember. Revenue is the money that comes into the business. Expenses, that's the money that goes out. Revenue may include sales of products, services, licensing fees, and grants. Expenses include worker wages, rent, taxes, health care, utility bills, and more. For-profit businesses strive for revenue to exceed expenses. When this happens, the owners of the business earn a profit. For a nonprofit business, having a budget surplus means you have excess revenue. Good news for them, the extra money can be rolled back into the service they provide. People with money tend to be cautious when investing or lending it out. They like being reasonably sure that the money will come back to them. They want to know that the borrower, in this case the entrepreneur, has a plan. Smart entrepreneurs will write a business plan. Business plans break down a few basic things. First, it starts with a summary and a description of the business. Next, it analyzes the market it will try to enter. It will describe the product or service in detail and explain why it's worthwhile to bring to market. When it comes to expenses, the plan should contain all the startup costs. The plan should also contain a projection of revenue and expenses for the next one to three years. So what you'll see in a carefully prepared business plan is a spreadsheet. It will try to project every possible expense while anticipating revenue and sales. This is a typical profit and loss statement you might see in a business plan. At the top left of the sheet, you'll see different sources of revenue. Along the top are the months for the first year. Notice how the revenues slowly increase as the year goes along. This is because the entrepreneur believes that sales will pick up as time moves on. In the table below, there are expenses broken down into broad categories. Notice that some of the costs do not change from one month to the next. These are called fixed costs and are usually negotiated in yearly contracts. Still, other expenses like utilities will change from one month to the next. Notice the jump in utility costs in the summer months as the entrepreneur believes that air conditioning will get more expensive. Costs that change from month to month are called variable. At the bottom of the chart, check out the comparison of the revenue and the expenses and watch for the change in color. This company, like most companies, will lose money when it first starts out. Expenses are high and revenues are low. Following the projection over the first year, as sales increase and pick up speed, the revenue catches up with the expenses. Now take a look at the bottom line. Notice in November, the company's revenue exceeds its expenses. And the numbers turn from red to black. In the black is an accounting expression that means you are making money. For a new venture, you can also say that we're breaking even. There's one line item that we didn't take a look at in the spreadsheet, and that's called capital investments. For most people, that word means savings, like in stocks and bonds. In economics and in business, 
Capital investments are things like machinery, software, computer hardware. In essence, they're things that could help your business grow in the future. All businesses must weigh current profits and losses with investments in future productivity. If you remember Kamal, he did not start a new business. Rather, he and his team of innovators work for a research lab that encourages new ideas. Once his bosses approved their idea, he had to come up with a business plan of his own to convince everyone that his idea could work and sustain itself. Entrepreneurs write business plans with budgets, but so do people who work for companies. Employees are encouraged to innovate and envision new products or services to help the company's bottom line. Cabal created a project proposal with his team. They described the innovation and projected what the costs would be. They then presented the idea to their bosses who gave them a green light to proceed. In agreeing to move forward, Kamal's bosses gave him a budget. They expect his team to stay within that budget, plus they want periodic progress reports. This is just like Billy's budget when he opened the pizzeria. We're never 100% certain about how much things will cost in the future, but we make our best guess. After the first few months, a business should look over its numbers and see if it's on budget. For instance, if projections call for a profit in a certain month and instead there's a loss, a careful review of the budget should reveal the problem. Moving forward, the business owners can make adjustments in how they behave to keep costs under control. Remember, you don't need to be a business major to innovate or envision solutions. If you have an idea and you believe in it, there are people and technology to help you. So keep your eyes open and keep asking questions. And keep on looking for those problems and ways to solve them. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.